Shalom, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Ka Hala Yahweh, Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Waha Raka Quidash, double honors to the men who taught me this truth the apostles and elders of the great millstone also peace and blessings to the hopeful elect lord willing this lesson will be edifying this is the book of ecclesiasticus chapter 2 and verse 1 my son if thou come to serve the lord prepare thy soul for temptation if you are sincerely serving Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, prepare thy soul for temptation because it is going to come. The scripture speaks about the servant is not greater than his Lord. If our Lord, Yahweh Shai, when he walked the earth in the flesh, was tempted, we in the flesh are going to be tempted also because we have put our hand to the plow to continue in the work of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. The scripture tells us in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 5, and verse 9, it says, Whom resisted steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So the hell that we catch in this truth is the same hell that a two-third would catch. Now, the difference is between the hell that the two-third catch and we catch being in the faith, we're suffering for righteousness' sake. A two-third is suffering only to be destroyed. They're going to be just like Esau, a two-time loser. But we in the faith, we're suffering because we're partaking the cross of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Once again, quoting the scripture, the servant is not greater than his Lord. So if our Lord, Yahweh Shai, suffered, we're also going to suffer. But we're suffering for righteousness sake. That's the difference. Verse 10, it says, but the power of all grace, which is the most high, the power of all favor, one word to describe grace, who have called us the hopeful elect unto his eternal glory by Hamashiach Yehawah Shai. After that, ye have suffered a while. See, this is the benefit of suffering. After that, ye have suffered a while. Make you perfect, established, strengthened, settles you. See that? So that's the benefit for being tempted because your faith is going to be tried. Okay, the scripture tells us in the book of Romans 8 and verse 17, it says, If children, then heirs, heirs of the Most High, and joint heirs with Hamashiach, if so be that we suffer with him, meaning partaking of his cross, that we may be also, if we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. All right? So by the sufferings that is put upon us, by us putting our hand to the plow, all right, being made sons of the Most High through partaking in the sufferings of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, we are going to be what? Made joint heirs with Hamashiach. Therefore, we are going to be glorified together with him in the sight of the Most High. Verse 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, the things that we're going through right now, are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So the things that we're going through right now is not going to be compatible with the glory that shall be revealed in us. The rewards that we're going to receive for the sufferings on this side. And why are we suffering? Because we are sincerely serving Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, following in the footsteps of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah, taking upon his cross. All right. So let's go back 
to 1 Peter 5 and verse 10 again. But the power of all grace who have called us unto his eternal glory by Hamashiach Yahweh that after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settles you. So those are the benefits for suffering. So going back to Ecclesiasticus chapter 2 and verse 1 again, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation, meaning it's going to come. And we just seen the benefits for enduring that temptation. He that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. All right. Now, the scripture tells us in verse two, set thine heart aright, meaning set your mind aright. The word heart goes back to the Hebrew word lob, which means your mind. So set thy mind aright and constantly endure, meaning you need to endure all the time. Why? Because you're going to go through something all the time. It's always going to be something. All right. Things are never going to be perfect in this walk. It says, and make not haste in the time of trouble. All right. Be not hasty to, you know, um, get out of that situation. Now, when we are catching hell, all right, it's not joyous, okay, but grievous, as the scripture tells us, okay? But within that hell, if you can muster up the strength to say the water, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, that is what need to be done, all right? Because in the midst of everything, Yahweh, why Yahweh, Shai is the one that's putting the hell upon you, all right? To try your faith, all right? To get the dross up off of you, all right? By putting that fire unto you. Verse three, it says, cleave unto him, meaning cleave unto Yahweh Shai and depart not away. All right. That's when you're going through your hell. It says that thou may have be increased at thy last end. The scripture says, once again, he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. So if you endure what Yahweh Yahweh Shai put upon you because the scripture says he's not going to put upon you uh, something that's going to overthrow you, roughly paraphrasing, meaning he's not going to put something upon you that you can't bear, but he's going to make a way out when it seems there is no way out when you're catching your hell. So verse three tells us again, cleave unto him and depart not away that thou may have be increased at thy last end. Meaning, if you endure unto the end, you're going to receive what? Salvation. Okay? Verse 4 says, Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. And the scripture mean exactly what it's saying. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. So whatever Yahweh Yahweh Shai put upon you in your individual walk, take it cheerfully. Now, that doesn't mean take it with a coconut smile. Take it with a Kool-Aid smile. You're catching hell and you got a big smile on your face. No, that means that whatever you're going through, mustering up enough of strength to continue to do the work, regardless of what's going on in your life. Remember, because the Most High is not going to put more on you than you can bear. Okay? So it says, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, meaning continue in the work, whatever hell that you're catching, and be patient, meaning to suffer, when thou art changed to a low estate. Now, we are put in the lowest estate that we've ever been in here in America. We've been in other captivities, but this captivity, all right, we don't even um, know who we are, okay? We don't have the names. Our woman is against us, but a small number have came back to the true names of Yahweh Yahweh Shai. A small number have came back to their true identity, Okay? It says, verse 5, for gold is tried in the fire. And living here in America, this is hell, all right? Fire is being put upon us on all sides, all right? But we want to be compatible to those precious metals, which are gold and silver. Quick precept, Isaiah 48 and 10. It says, behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver, meaning 
I'm going to refine you, but not as actual silver is refined. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. All right. And affliction is just what it is. Your soul being afflicted on all sides. And the most high through your house shall know how to afflict every individual in this walk of ours. So every brother is not going to catch the same hell. All right. But what irks one brother may not irk another brother. So the most high know who and what to do to everybody. So let's read it again. Isaiah 48 and 10. Behold, I, ref I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. All right. So the most high have chosen us to go through hell to be refined, to get that dross off of us, to come out dross free. All right. To be that choice silver, to be that choice gold. But first, we must go through a fiery furnace just like gold and silver. But that fiery furnace is the furnace of adversity and the furnace of affliction. Okay, so back to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, and verse 5 again. For gold is tried in the fire, just like silver. Both are compatible to the elect and acceptable men. In the furnace of adversity. So we want to be accepted in the sight of the Most High, which is to be made joint heirs with our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, due to the sufferings, if we endure. Why? Because we have put our hand to the plow. We are sincerely serving Yahweh Shai. So the servant, and we are the servants of Yahweh Shai, shall not be greater than Yahweh Shai, which is the Lord. Meaning if he caught hell in the flesh, we're going to catch hell too. All right. It says, believe in him and we, he will help thee. Order thy way aright and trust in him. All right. So we must trust in the words that we have received. Once we believe the report, we must believe the whole report. Okay. So the scripture tells us, okay, here in verse seven, it says, ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy. And go not aside, lest ye fall. Meaning, don't step off of this straight and narrow path. Keep your eyes single. All right? Don't wander out of the way of understanding. Because that leads to your destruction. Okay? Verse 8, it says, Ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. And what's our main reward that we're seeking? Salvation. All right? Verse 9, it says, Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. And how do we hope? Through the gift of faith. That gives us the capability to hope. And what is that good? To be changed, all right? To be um, put in a position where our laws, all right, from the Most High that he gave to Moses to give unto us, all right, in the time of our first captivity, be placed on our inward parts, okay, by us being changed. But in order for you to receive all of that, you must endure unto the end. So it says, ye that fear the Lord, hope for good. So that's our hope. And for the everlasting joy and mercy, which is going to be in the kingdom. All right. That's our everlasting joy in the kingdom. And that mercy is receiving uh, uh, mercy from the most high through Yahweh Shai, being a part of the house of David, receiving the sure mercies of David. Okay. It says, verse 10, look at the generations of old, meaning look at our forefathers, our forefather Noah, all right, uh, the three holy children, the apostle Paul, all right, and the rest of the disciples, starting with the head disciple, the apostle Peter, they all caught hell, okay, so we should consider their lots. It says, look at the generations of old and see. Did ever any trust in the Lord, Yahweh Shai, and was confounded? And the answer to that question is no one. Or did any abide in his fear? Or did any tarry or lodge in his fear and was forsaken? The answer to that question is no one. Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? All right, so if you're given the true names, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, and you're silly, sincerely serving those names and calling upon those names in truth, you're not going to be despised. You're not going to be left out naked. You're going to be covered. Verse 11, it says, For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering, 
and very pitiful and forgive of sins and save of in the time of affliction. All right. So that's why the scripture says he's not going to put more on you than you can bear, but he's going to make a way out. So he put the afflictions upon you to test your faith. And if you endure through those uh, afflictions, he's going to make a way out of those afflictions. It says, woe be to the fearful hearts. All right. Woe be to the, the minds that are afraid and faint hands. All right. Meaning what? Those that, that fall out and the sinner that go of two ways, meaning you're double minded. You're not single eyed. So the scripture says, woe be to, meaning a massive death and destruction to the fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that go of two ways. It says, woe unto him that that is faint hearted for he believeth not. So if you uh, fall out in your mind, you didn't believe from the beginning. It says, therefore, shall he not be defended, meaning you're not going to have a, a protective covering round about you in the time of Jacob's trouble, leading all the way up to the total destruction upon the soils of America. Okay. It says, woe unto you that have lost patience that have woe unto you have lost the capability to suffer. Because you must have the capability to suffer living here in America day by day. He says, and what will ye do when the Lord, Yahweh Shai, shall visit you? He says, they that fear the Lord will not disobey his word, and they that love him will keep his ways. They that fear the Lord will, will seek that which is pleasing unto him, and they that love him shall be filled with the law. See that? So we're going to be filled with the law. Okay? What, what is pleasing unto Yahweh, Yahweh Shah right now? To prophesy the downfall of America, to set thy face against Mount Seir, all right? To give uh, warning to the Israelites to repent and turn back to the Most High through Yahweh Shah. And in the process, condemn the world. Verse 17, they that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight. And that's what we're doing. It says, saying, and this is what we're saying, we will fall into the hands of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, and not into the hands of men. For as his majesty is, so is his mercy. So the same splendor that Yahweh, Yahweh Shai have, the same sense of that is within mercy. Okay, and that's something that we can't comprehend in our mind. All right, the most high mercy. All right. We want to pray for the sure mercies of David, all right? And that goes back to the word clemency, meaning to be forgiven for things that you shouldn't be forgiven for. And that's what we're praying for. And that's why we want to fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men. Because men are cruel, all right? Especially the, the son of perdition, the man of sin. He's cruel, all right? Even in his uh, uh, warmest of moments, so to speak, he's cruel, all right? So we want to endure all of the hard times that the Most High shall place upon us through Yahweh Shai for sincerely serving him. Why? Because the servant is not greater than his Lord. Meaning you're going to have to take up your cross daily and follow Yahweh Shai. All right. And that's not an easy task. So Lord willing, I pray that this made sense and that this was edifying. Shalom DTA.